Hi there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and sitting next to me on the couch is a museum piece. Now it didn't come from the Smithsonian or the Louvre, but it should be going there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is this simply this beautiful poster and large poster simply represents the very first rock and roll dance concert in modern San Francisco history. It's from October of 1965. The date here says just October 16th, and the year is 65. So that means this event and this poster predates all the early acid tests, trip festivals, anything Bill Graham was involved in, including the Mime Troupe benefits, and certainly all of the Bill Graham and Family Dog concert posters that you see, BG1 and FD1. This is just really, this is, <clears throat> well, it's kind of a seed, isn't it? Um, there's a, there's a, what's sometimes called the first psychedelic concert poster hails from the summer of 65, Virginia City, Nevada, the Charlatans at the Red Dog Saloon. So that poster is called The Seed. But if that's the seed in Nevada, this would have to be the Bay Area seed. I mean, it's just, it's just the first. And it's quite scarce. It's just beautiful. And the reason this event was thrown is because, um, sort of hard to believe as it is today, there was a real need for dancing in the Bay Area to music. There were plenty of places to see music, but whether it was the cavernous Cow Palace and the Rolling Stones or the small Matrix Club, which held under 300, there was a, it was seated viewing and listening and enjoying the music, not dancing. Um, you sort of had to have a permit and stuff to throw a dance. And so, you know, the, uh, the locals, especially the women, were saying, we're tired of going to bars just to be able to dance to live music. Let's throw an event that, that, that focuses on, you know, a, a show and dance, just like all the old R&B shows did in the 50s and 60s. They said show and dance across the top. So the, uh, these, these four people, these, I guess you could call them amateurs, none of them were professional event organizers or lawyers or sharpies, just two men and two women in the Bay Area who were friends got together and borrowed money from their parents and said, let's throw this event. How cool would that be? And they called themselves the Family Dog. The uh, most famous of the four, you've almost certainly heard of, of course, is Alton Kelly of Kelly Mouse fame and quite a poster designer in his own right. Um, the other three didn't really go on to any kind of um, household name status in Bay Area, Bay Area rock circles, but boy, by starting the Family Dog, that was quite a contribution, that's for sure. And at least one of those four members, by the way, loved comic books, was really obsessed with Marvel comic books and everything. So they, just for the fun of it, nicknamed this event, this seminal, this brand new thing they were doing, a tribute to Doctor Strange. And those words don't appear on this poster, but they appear on the handbill, which I'll show you in a moment. So they rented the Longshoreman's Hall, right on the edge of Fisherman's Wharf, down there in, um, you know, obviously San Francisco near the wharf. And it was a newly built Union Hall that had hosted a concert from Count Basie so far, and even a visit from Russian dignitary Nikita Khrushchev, of all things. Can you imagine that? And then here comes a, a tribute to Dr. Strange. It should have been to Dr. Khrushchev, <laughs> maybe. But um, that's pretty crazy. And then it was getting the talent. So the four people of the family dog enlisted Marty Ballin of the Airplane, a brand new group that had played little, if any, outside the Matrix Club itself, and Grace Slick of the Great Society, and you can see, in fact, these names here on the poster. There's the, the Airplane, the Great Society, um, the Marbles, which was a local four-man four rock band, you know, two guitars, drum and a bass. Um, and shortly after the show, in fact, in early 66, the two guitarists would leave the Marbles and go join uh, the Loading Zone. And then, of course, the Charlatans as the headliners, because they were, after all, the, uh, you know, the big buzz for the Red Dog Saloon gig that summer, so let's have them headline this event, right? And there's George Hunter, the leader of the Charlatans, leaning on his cane. And they're decked out, of course, in their late 1800s Wild West garb that they were so famous for and uh, which really got attention. And then they thought, well, who can we have MC the event? And I'm, I'm doing a little bit of faith connecting the dots here, but, you know, I'm just telling it as a, um, as a story. But uh, it makes perfect sense to have your MC be a radio guy, right? And the, a radio, or radio gal. And the connection is also they could also plug the show on the air. So they got KYA's Graveyard Jock um, as the MC, an overnight DJ named um, Russ the Moose Syracuse. So he was enlisted as the, uh, the MC, so they were really getting rolling now. And uh, besides this poster, um, Alton Kelly, one of the four people of the family dog, the, the earliest incarnation of the family dog, uh, drew up a thousand black and white flyers. 
and uh, that they actually don't bear that does not bear much resemblance to this poster. In fact, I've got a picture of it here. You've certainly seen this before if you're a collector of psychedelic art or concert posters and handbills, but there it is, you know. And it's uh, a tribute to Dr. Strange, which does mention that dance name. And uh, so those, those black and white flyers were plastered all over Berkeley and the Haight and San Francisco State and everything drumming up interest. And then Marty Bellin of the Airplane and of the Matrix did this poster. And I don't know why he didn't choose the Doctor, uh, he didn't put the Doctor Strange wording on there. Perhaps somebody does, and if you do, you can leave that in the comments section under this video or whatever, but he chose not to mention that. And it's interesting to see, um, you know, that you can't really see the bottom of the poster. I'll hoist it, up, hoist it up for you a little bit, and you can get a better idea. But it's got typical wording for ticket locations and things like that. Um, you know, it says the uh, um, tickets at the... <clears throat> I should, well, the committee lobby and the associated students of University of California box office at Berkeley and the same thing at SF State and at the Matrix. Of course, you could buy tickets to the Matrix with Marty's involvement with this. And then it's kind of a funny wordy line along the bottom that Ballin chose to put. I'll scroll it by you there and you can sort of see it. And instead of just saying at the door or, the you know, just at the door, usually covers it on most concert posters, Marty got a little bit wordy and put and then you can always get them at the door. <laughs> so that's pretty funny wording for him to use. But it did the trick, and it's a, it's a nice art piece, isn't it? It's really a nice, uh, it's just a sweet poster, and it's uh, such a seminal key event. And you know, the event itself was a success. Uh, despite the boxy arena sound of the Cow Palace and the Mickey Mouse sound system, that's all they could either afford or put their hands on, um, it was a happening, and... So many people in the audience, you know, we, we uh, have become pop figures themselves in the Bay Area and everything. I mean, it's, it was the genesis, right, of a huge movement. And it just opened the doors for this just flood of dance concerts and the whole San Francisco music scene, which, of course, went on to change all of pop culture and maybe even the world. And they pulled it off. And this is just a really large, beautiful, rare poster, which, is, uh, which advertised the event. So I couldn't wait to share it with you. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for coming by. That's quite a, that's quite a breath taker. I'm a little bit out of breath talking about this, but it's just such a, a monster piece. It's just a, just such a key, key poster. So glad you stopped by, and thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time with something less significant, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.